in the season we started very well and then fell away and luckily come good late in the season although we didn't play well in the playoff final got very lucky but it was what was funny is it took its toll on Harry it really did it drained him and he said Kev this this is me regardless of how <laughs> regardless of how the season finishes this is me done I'm not having I can't do that can't go again I've I can't keep going I've had enough I can't I've had enough and he kept saying even with the playoffs I can't I won't be able to keep going never forget it and then we end up winning the final and we sat in the coach in outside the dressing room still at Wembley underneath the state at the stand and we jumped on the coach we just won and I looked at Harry the very first thing he said to me we're going to need some new players for next year <laughs> He did. I feel like it soon went out the window. He got promotion. <laughs> he went again. But it was, he did, it was very... Is that because the environment that the club Well, he loved in? it, he loved it, he loved it. But it had actually by Christmas, the January window, January window didn't work out for us as it wanted. We would find it very difficult. We'd done well at home, but we couldn't win away. And it was, and he, he thought enough, enough's enough. And it was, so he called it a day. Just talking about, obviously, and we'll talk about it again, about the environment, because that's something that I think, you look in today's game, that maybe why some teams don't do so well. And you look at, obviously, the teams that you've worked in as manager and when you were playing, the environment, you all speak about the environment and the type of player. I always look at, from outside, looking at that QPR team that went down, and I look at some players there, because I remember I was there the day QPR got relegated, because I was... I had a season ticket at Redden at the time. Yeah. And I was there, and I was, and obviously Redden went down on the same day. What I saw about that, and it was, I don't know if it's ever true, but you look at like the players like Jose Basingua, you've got players like Benoit Suakoto. I think they're laughing down the tunnel or something that you hear this. What's that like to deal with as soon as you've been relegated and you see something like that, or you see players that don't really care? And what, how do you deal with that as a... Obviously, all the emotions have got 100 miles an hour. Is it just like, right, I want to tell you exactly what I think, or is it just like, right, I don't... Extremely, it, it's extremely difficult. Um, extremely difficult if, um, if they're not as focused as you want them to be, if they're not at the club for the right reasons, it, it becomes very difficult, and don't, don't matter who you are, you know, whether you're Harry or Alex Ferguson or whoever you are, um, if that dressing room you know, for whatever reason, isn't right, it's going to be nigh impossible for you to get the results that you need. And it was no different for us. We found it difficult. You need, um, you need the time to be able to change that um, mentality and the dynamics in the dressing room. And was it players like that when you look at and you think, we want to get rid of you because, like you said, you, you're not, you don't care enough or whatever reason you're not fit into our system or whatever... But because of the, at that time, obviously, a lot of players might have gone there for the money. Yeah. Do you think that, right, well, you can go and you think, well, why would they leave? If, if they don't care about the club or the, the actual environment they're in. And that leads me on to Adele Trapp. And there was all, I always remember watching it. Obviously, he's not fit enough to play football. He's not... And all the, the big interview. Is it true that what people say about Adele, when he wants to one of the best players that people see? Yeah, I, you know, I, from a personal point of view, I, I, um, I just didn't think... I think, he saw the, I think he saw him as a footballer differently to how, you know, you, you need to be in order... To, he is another maverick, and you have to make allowances for that. And you're never going to get him to work his socks off. Yeah. But he has to do... a to a degree he has, to, he has to get to a level and yeah. and I don't I, I really my opinion is is it didn't apply himself like he should have applied himself to get and he never up to this point we'd had him at Tottenham also I don't think that he'd, he'd been able to get the very best out of himself and I think that's probably the biggest shame for any footballer if you don't make the most of the talent that you've got don't get me wrong he would have had games and periods where he was I, I, you know, I've never come across a player, um, all the players that we've spoken about, I've never come across a player who's got more talent than the Delta app. 
No player, well, natural. no player I've ever come across got more talent than he has. And I just didn't think that he, I just don't think for whatever reason that he got made the most of the talent and that he had. And I don't always think that he'd applied him, you know, who am I to criticise and tell? Yeah. You know what I mean? He's been a, had some fantastic moves and played from some great clubs. But in my, my opinion is, is I don't, I just don't think that he got the best out of himself. And sometimes, um, that causes problems. No, definitely. And I think, like you said, that if you have someone like that in the dressing room and he's playing, for example, because, like you say, he's a maverick or something like that, and then you see someone else who's working the working the back end off and they're not playing, I guess where that can, can have an issue. But obviously, your time at QPR with Chris as well. Yeah. Obviously, like, what a manager, I think. And as a coach, I think... Great coach. People have said it highly enough. And... Obviously, from there, your time in Hong Kong. What? How did that come about quickly? And how? Well, we'd, we'd, uh, we knew. Um, I knew. Got to meet the guy who I ended up going to work for in Hong Kong. I'd met when we was on a pre-season tour when we was at Tottenham. We went on tour to China and then Hong Kong and met him. And uh, that, they actually asked me if I'd go out there and do like a um, a presentation for some Hong Kong coaches, which I did. Went out there. And then he asked me while I was there whether I'd be interested in taking his team for a while, which I did. Um, ended up taking them till the end of the season, and we did okay. And we had a, one, they ended up winning a couple of cups, which was fantastic. Then they asked me back the following season, and um, so that that was great. So I've had a couple of spells out there. Um, different. Different, yeah. Probably I mean, the, the standard is not, you know, the standard isn't no. what the standard is here. You can't confuse Hong Kong and China. No. It's different. But, that, but actually, um, a, a really, really lovely, vibrant place to live. A wonderful experience. Wouldn't change it for the world. Um, my time there, loved it. You know, would consider going back again. I, loved, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, taking a team ultimately is taking a team. And, um, you know, standing on the sideline, being in charge there, I, didn't, I, don't, I wanted to win as much there as I did wherever I've been, whoever, whatever club I've been. So I, lo I loved it there. So that was really how that came about and um, a couple of great periods of time. Yeah. And your most recent position at South End. Yep. And you came back end of the season. Yeah. You kept them up by a point. Is that... Or you yeah, managed we managed to stay up. Yeah, we managed to stay up. We uh, the club was again, you know, the um, before me the club had been in a they'd been hit with injuries and um, had a really difficult time. I think since Christmas had won and, and was in a and when you're you know when you've got momentum is and but when you haven't got it and they at that time they certainly didn't have it and couldn't win a game. And we're struggling, and we're we'll just going down and down and down. There. So I ended up going there for the last um, couple of months of the season. The players managed to galvanise themselves. Um, culminated in the last day of the season, needing a win at home to Sunderland. Sunderland was needed a win to go up automatically. So they were like, um, and I'll never forget that was just um, felt like to me. It felt like. We didn't promote. Felt no different to when we was at Portsmouth or QPR getting promotion. Felt no different. It was just to the club. It was the same. You know, we hadn't gone down. It was amazing, a fantastic, and it was a brilliant period. Um, we'd managed to win a couple of games, got a couple of draws. A real roller coaster of the last few games of the season, and the crowd went bananas at the back end of the year. And managed to win the last game, and it was. You know, I know I wouldn't change it for the world. It was fantastic. I loved it. Um, but then we started the season, and pretty quickly found out that you know that sort of got back into I don't want to say old habits, but we, we, it was everything was pretty fragile at the club. We conceded goals. If we conceded one goal, the heads went down. We conceded another goal within five minutes, and this reared its head very early on and become very difficult. Six games later. Was the club in a difficult time? Obviously, there. I know they're in a difficult time as it is now, in terms of behind the scenes. It was, the, yeah. There was, was it still then, or was it? Yeah, different? it was. We did have difficulties, but uh, you know, I must say, 
uh, Ron Martin, the chairman, um, um, was really supportive of me. Um, was as good as gold with me. Very, very supportive. Um, try, tried to do and give us everything he could um, to be. I don't, you know, now they're in more financial difficulty. Maybe yeah. all of this was bubbling under. But it was. <clears throat> it, I think you know. And since I've gone, I don't. You know, I don't. Think, I don't think anybody else has found it any, has found it any easier. No, no. So it's it's just difficult. I think it's you know a little bit like. You know, you've got to turn that ship around, and you're not. It's going to take a long while to turn it around. You're not going to do it. Um, it's just giving somebody the time um, and be patient. Yeah. But you're not. You're not giving it. And is that you, on that time thing? Do you think that is because it's, it's a, obviously the industry is so demanding? It and is, yeah. It's, and and you know. Did you you did you resign in the end? Didn't yeah, you? I, we did. It, I, it was the best for everybody. Yeah, but, you know, in the end, I would. And is that come. because you thought you you personally couldn't take it any further, or yeah, you could I, see where it was turning? To? I could see where it was all going. I don't, you know, I I don't think in the end I thought my presence wasn't helping yeah. anyone at the club, and it would the, the crowd were not happy, and they let their you know I, they pay their money, yeah, and definitely. they're entitled to their opinion. But you know, so but that's what happens if if they don't like what they see or if they don't like you or if that then the crowd now they can they get one of the biggest changes actually in football I'm not saying it's not good but the, the crowds can bring about change at a football club yeah. you know Pat, you know I remember back in the days when I was playing football I hardly ever can't remember when I was at Southampton that the support even we never even when we lost I can't remember getting booed off yeah. you know, we didn't really and they supported um, slightly different. Not saying it's wrong, but, but, it's, but, it's, told, but it, yeah. it's different. They, now they'll let you know, and <laughs> so and it's everything in the football is. If you don't win within six matches, you're in trouble. Definitely. And just just before a couple of quick fire questions that I like to do with everyone. Just as soon as, soon as I say this, what's the first thing that comes to your head um, to wrap up? Best player you've ever coached in your whole coaching career. Uh, the best player would have been, you know, Luka Modric, Gareth Bale, Rafa van der Vaart, the, the, the Tottenham group. Another level. Tottenham group. Best coach you've ever worked with? Um, my father, who was wonderful, Harry Redknapp, yeah. who has been, um, a, I'm not, and I'm just saying because I work for him, but a brilliant manager. Proudest moment in football? As a player and as a coach? To, to have been a player, because I was struggling to be a player when I was a youngster, to actually have a career as a player was my, probably my proudest moment. What about as a coach? Um, proudest moment, uh, being associated with Tottenham for four good years, um, uh, would have been the proudest moment. A couple of promotions would have been fantastic. Staying up at South End would have been my time at Hong Kong where we did well. All moments that I'll never forget. Best goal you ever scored? Obviously, I know you were a right back, so maybe. Best goal I ever scored would have been. Um, best goal I ever scored would have been against Leeds United at Carrow Road before the days of television, so you have to take my word for it. <laughs> outside the right foot from outside the box went in, and and the because it's not on record now, so I can't. But it, I think. It probably went. It was probably 45 yards, but in truth, yeah. it was probably 22. Ah. But because there's no record of it, everyone who asks me, it just 45. gets further and further <laughs> as the years go by. <laughs> and best player you've ever, you've ever played against and shared a football pitch with? The the, the um, it was horrendous as a player, horrendous going to Liverpool. Ian Rush and Kenny Dalglish. Oh my God, it was horrendous. Talk about not sleep the night before. They were brilliant. Kenny, Kenny Dalglish was just cleverest, classiest. Ian Rush worked his socks off. They were brilliant. Best player I ever played with, by the way, Martin Peters yeah. at Norwich City. Wow, what a player. He died, bless his heart now. But he had the back end of his career at Norwich, and it was a treat playing with him. And last thing that I like to always end on, what is next? For Kevin Bond, I'd like to stay in football. Um, still, 
um, energised by it. I still watch it all. I still take a keen interest in everything football, whether it's Premier League or non-league. Referees, you know, it aggravates me that like it always. I'm still very much, you know, and I'm not, I don't feel like I'm past it in any way. I'm still young in my ways and still think that I can offer in some capacity. So I'd just like to stay involved if I could. Lovely. Oh, mate. Thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. Um, and yeah, cheers, mate. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, hopefully there'll be some more guests coming on soon. But yeah, thanks, Kevin. Pleasure. Cheers, mate.